let's talk about problem D, guardians of the galaxy. This was one of the most difficult problems today. It's geometry. We are given a polygon with n up to 100 points and two special points, the start and the target. We want to find the shortest distance from start to target, but it's also allowed not really to reach the target, but just reach the visibility of a target. As you can see in this example, it's enough to pass here and to the right and stop at that position because from here already you can straight look at the target without any interruptions. Maybe you need to move some epsilon so that this wall wouldn't be an obstacle that is in between you and the target. And there was some formal definition of if this uh, point is actually a circle of very small radius, then you need to see half of it. It doesn't matter too much. In this uh, task, in this test on the left, the answer is total length of that path in green right now. On the right, we have a more malicious example where from the start, we need to go a little bit to the right and only then we see the red circle. From the starting position, we kind of see this red point, but we want to see, see let's say, non-zero part of it. And here, from both sides, from above and from below, there are obstacles. This was like a, an edge case, let's say, for us to handle later. We'll get back to this conversation. First, uh, this is a more complicated test, one of actual tests that were used to uh, judge the contestants. First, if we have a start and you want to find shortest distance just to some target point, you can run, well, Dijkstra. Dijkstra will find the shortest paths. And for that, you can, from any point, if you know the distance from the beginning here, which is initially zero, you can consider all possible straight segments towards all the vertices, all the interesting points in the drawing. Interesting points are for now, let's say, vertices and the initial and the target point. For each of them, check if it doesn't intersect anything. Hopefully, like, possibly, if possible, use integers for those checks to avoid precision errors. And whenever a segment is possible, so those blue are possible here, update the distance for those interesting points. For each of them, you will update that your distance from the start is this. Let's say for this one closest, say it was 2.7. It's okay to use real values here. It will not affect the answer between like impossible and some real value. It will just affect the answer by epsilon. So let's say this, this 2.7 will, again, consider all the interesting points, including going straight along the segment, which is allowed, just to kind of walk next to it, and will update interesting points again. This Dijkstra would be n squared from, for every interesting point, you consider every other interesting point to go there, times checking if it intersects anything else, that's n, plus, I think here in brackets we have logarithm, but this logarithm doesn't affect the total time complexity, it's negligible, so n cubic. The difference in this problem is that we have a target. We'll talk about that. Uh, the initial drawing actually is very use useful, the initial test, uh, because we don't even go towards the target point here, we go kind of further away, but this way we will get faster to the area of visibility of the target point. I will now mark some area, this one. This is area that actually you want to reach. The task doesn't say find shortest distance from the start to the target point. No, it says find the shortest path from the start to this target area, area of visibility from the target red point. And because of that here, we went like that. This is straight angle. Here we have an angle of 90 degrees because if you have a point where you are right now, let's say here, and you, you want to reach some polygon, let's say, then it's possible that you will go to the closest segment and that means going to your projection on that segment. And there is here a straight angle. See another example? If there is a target here, then it creates such an area. If you already start anywhere here, then you want that distance. The answer is zero because from the start you see the target. And if you reach any, if you start anywhere else, let's say here, you will run the Dijkstra. With that, you will update the distance for those guys. But also for every 
vertex when you are there, or for every interesting point, because that includes the starting point as well, if you have some distance, say 2.7, you consider maybe I should go perpendicularly to some segment. So our time complexity changes a little bit. We still have O of n for the interesting points. And for each of them, you will go n squared uh, needed for Dijkstra. You will consider path to every other interesting point, and then you will check intersections. Plus, separately, you for every such point, once you already know the distance, here it's 2.7, you will consider a segment perpendicular to some existing segment from this red visible area, visible from the target. And there are now also n such possible segments here. For each of them, you will do the checks. So that's for me, there are n segments. And for each of them, I need to check if it doesn't intersect anything from the input. Those are just black segments from the input. So that's simply n squared. If I'm not mistaken, I here we have in total n cubic time complexity. If this is later posted on YouTube, we'll correct that in comments if that's not correct. And the annoying thing is just you really need to avoid precision issues if, poss if possible. And there are tests where just barely you're not able to see something because here from both sides you're limited. In this case, the only area that you really see from this, let's say, point at the bottom let's say that this is the target, is everything here also including this area on the right, but you don't see stuff here on the left. Uh, you, you would need to move to the right to see that. So be aware of that. And now if you want to use integers, mostly it's fine because everything in the input is integers, but be aware of this ugly case. The point here, so if you find red area visible by the target, you need to draw lines from it to every vertex and you need to see where it intersects the polygon here at the bottom, the green point. This point sadly doesn't have integer coordinates. It can be expressed as fractions because the formula for something like that, so intersection of this segment between or line between two points and then here there is another segment, it can, it is a form a divided by b comma c divided by d. Those are x y x y coordinates. Mm. And if you keep like them like that, you can do everything using integers, except for distances in Dijkstra. But those can be kept as real values. Small precision error there will not hurt. While a small precision error in holding coordinates can hurt because it will affect your understanding of areas here. Shifting any point by epsilon might really change the answer by a lot. And if you do everything carefully, using integers whenever possible, you will get accepted. For more from the ICPC World Finals DACA, follow us at news.icpc.global and on social media with our hashtag ICPCWFDACA.